Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports and some breaking news as there's officially been a statement released about the rest of the rugby championship with the um, games in Australia currently being on hold following the cancellation of games that were supposed to be taking place in New Zealand. And SA Rugby have officially released a statement on Friday morning offering to host the rugby championship and offering a bit of an update on what is currently going on. Before we just look at the, the statement as well as sort of what we think might actually happen and how this might play out, please do smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel as well. As always, a big thank you to Manscaped who are currently supporting the channel. They are the number one um, brand trusted for men's below the waist grooming and are trusted by over 2 million men worldwide. You can get 20% off as well as free shipping using the code forever at manscaped.com. Go and check them out and give them support because they are supporting the channel. But uh, right, so we, we spoke about this a lot on our show last night and we're, we're in terms of what are the possible options. If the rugby championship doesn't take place in Australia, in, in Perth, where will it go and what will happen? And one of the options was potentially to come to South Africa. And everybody sort of came out saying that that wasn't going to be an option. But SA Rugby has now confirmed that it is prepared to host the rest of, of the Costa Rugby, Costa Lager Rugby Championship um, after the leg in New Zealand was was cancelled. And I think this is SA Rugby trying to put pressure on Sanzo, saying, listen, we had the British and Irish Lions series. It went off without a, um, it didn't, it didn't go off without a hitch, but by the, by the end of it, they sort of managed to, do it. They said that we are experienced in hosting these events now, and pending the government's approval, they are happy to bring the rugby championship to South Africa. So if we look at the statement itself, um, it said, uh, New Zealand announced that the planned match against the Springboks in Auckland and Dunedin at the end of next month had been cancelled, and then, without informing their SANS or partners, Unilaterally um, issued a media release announced, announcing they would not fly their team to Perth as scheduled for planned match against the Wallabies. So... You know, it's a bit of a go. It looks like New Zealand haven't quite sort of been very transparent with what exactly is going on. Sanzo then said it was working, currently working night and day with all stakeholders and the tournament's associated commercial partners and rights holding partners to find a suitable solution for the remaining matches. Now, Jury Ru, SA Rugby CEO, has come out in the statement and said, We have advised Sanzo that we are ready and able to host the remainder of the competition in South Africa pending our government's approval. But we are now well versed in turning on, on rugby tests within the prevailing COVID restrictions and have the venues and accommodation necessary. We just need the go-ahead. Um, so the, 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 the uh, um, Springboks, as well as Argentina, were scheduled to fly to Australia tomorrow on Sunday. Oh, sorry, on Sunday. And that has officially been put on hold. They will not fly to Australia on Sunday um, until they will not do go anywhere, basically, until the final plans have been made. The match tomorrow will be unaffected. That will still go ahead down the Nelson Mandela Bay Stadium. But after that match, Argentina and South Africa will not be flying out of Cape Town on Sunday to Australia. That has been put on hold and nothing will sort of happen until there's an official update on exactly where the rugby championship will take place. Now, the options at the moment seem to be if they're not going to go to Australia, if, if New Zealand refuse to go to Australia, the options are going to be either going to Europe or coming to South Africa. Now, each of them sort of hold their own problems. Going to the UK, for example, is in terms of about red listed countries, in terms of quarantine, you know, South Africa is a red listed country. Um, Australia and New Zealand uh, talks about if they were to go across to the UK, they would have to go via Singapore to try and sort of um, get around quarantine um, rules and, and, and stuff like that. Similar to South Africa, they would probably also need to go either go somewhere or, or do something so they wouldn't have to necessarily quarantine for that, that sort of 14 day period. So that is where sort of the complications come with going to Europe. The the upsides of, of going to Europe is that they can be they can be fans in stadiums, you know. So revenue could be up. You could have these sort of games in front of fans, but it would be on, and it would be on neutral grounds, which I suppose is is fairer in many ways. But fairness doesn't seem to be an issue when the Springboks were expected to go over and Argentina expected to not play a single game at home, but they must come to South Africa and then the Springboks and Argentina must go and play all their games against Australia and New Zealand in Australia and New Zealand. So that was never an issue. Um, in terms of neutrality, but coming to South Africa can offer its own issues because you know will Australia and New Zealand travel to South Africa? Will they, you know, given the given the issues in South Africa, although cases are coming down and and there has and there was quite a successful by bubble by the end of it within the Springbok camp and the Lions camp throughout the um, the test series for the British and Irish Lions. So it's going to be interesting, and I think. You know, in many ways, I suppose it is safer to come to South Africa because they will be going into a bio bubble. They will be going into a proper bubble, and there will be no fans at stadiums, only key personnel. So you don't have to worry about that sort of sort of thing. They will be sort of at the accommodation, straight to uh, training venues, straight to the stadium. 
that would be the situation in South Africa, but it would be behind closed doors. If you go to to sort of the UK, um, you know, it might not be, it might be in a Bible, but there'll still obviously be fans, there'll still be sort of a heightened risk, really, um, in terms of, of the play and stuff like that. So it's going to be an interesting one to sort of see where they go, you know, because there are pros and cons of both. Obviously, you know, we'd love to see rugby in front of fans. SA Rugby are going to sit there and say, well, if you guys are prepared to have the games in Australia and New Zealand and not worry about us having home games, then why, why aren't you prepared to come to South Africa and play on our home turf um, for, for a couple of games? So it's, it looks like it's a little bit of a power struggle actually sort of currently happening with New Zealand apparently, you know, making decisions without informing all the various Sands are partners. Now SA Rugby coming out and being very transparent, very openly saying, we will take the rugby championship. You can come here. We can sort it out. We just need you guys to sort of say yes. So interesting to see how this all plays out. But at the moment, they will not be flying out on Sunday as originally planned. So the entire sort of fixtures um, after tomorrow are currently on, on hold. And, and as soon as we get an update, then we'll update you on exactly what's happening. Um, but that is currently the situation. Hopefully, we'll have clarity on it over the next couple of days. But it is interesting. This is the first sort of official communication that has come out of SA Rugby regarding the rest of the championship. Please do smash like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Go check out manscaped.com. 20% off and free shipping using the code Ferreira. My name is Stephen, and I'll chat to you guys soon.